Good evening and welcome to another episode of My Future. I'm Ruben Eko and as you can see we're in another setting this evening. Today we're focusing on film in Zimbabwe and we thought no better place to have our episode but the Stir Kenny Call Cinemas at Eastgate in Harare. And uh, we have a panel uh, amongst them award winning actors and they're going to be taking us through the motions around film in Zimbabwe and we're going to highlight some of the key films that have come out of our country and look at where the industry is going. Asking the same questions again as we did last time about is this a money-making industry or not so to my panel good evening to all of you and thank you for joining us all right so uh, let me start by introducing the lady right we have Charlene Mangu Magueni welcome thank you Charlene is a voiceover artist a news anchor and an actress mm -hmm. which comes above all the acting the acting yes because voice art is acting behind right. a microphone right so is this a passion or a, a skill or is it work? It's a passion mixed with skill yeah. that pays the bills. Pays the bills. Yeah. All right. And then we also have um, Nick Zemura. Nick is uh, visiting us for some time. Nick is always in and out of the country. Um, Nick is uh, a writer, an actor, a producer, a director. And I understand right now you're working on a series of films in Tanzania. Yes, we are. But we are still uh, finishing up here in Zim. Okay. And so... I could say we are much more excited about that. About the Zimbabwe yes, aspect of it. Yes. So we, while you were here this time, you've been shooting actual we, movies? Uh, we did a TV series for okay. ZBC, and um, we are w still working on another movie. Good, so we have something to look forward to. And then uh, we also have uh, Donald Mabido. Donald is a director, and uh, I believe one of your niches is documentaries. Uh, documentaries and feature films. And feature films. All right, so documentaries in Zimbabwe, I mean, we have a lot of current affairs issues. Do you sort of steer away from the obvious, maybe the ones that are not politically correct? Um, wh where's your focus? Well, uh, if you had to look at maybe uh, stories that actually make a mark uh, worldwide, mm -hmm. we, we are talking love and uh, politics of survival. So my documentaries are actually bordered around that. But I also do feature films as well. Actually, feature films uh, are the th first things that I started doing before I actually ventured into documentaries. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then last but not least, we have uh, the current holder of the NAMA 2016 Best Actor. He is also a writer, a director, and a theatre artist. He started theatre acting in 1987. Mr. Anthony Tongani, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so um, as I said, a number of things to get through regarding film in Zimbabwe. I, when I was walking through here, didn't notice any Zimbabwean films showing at the cinema. Why is that? Oh, well, because there are none that are accepted yet in this uh, facility. Not because there are none that are produced, but we do lack the support to create the types of work that would come and compete with the million dollar movies that you see there. Actually, hundred of mil hundreds of millions, uh, if you think of it. And yet, in this country, we have so many people that are talented. Um, you won't be surprised to find Shona names and Debele names on those credits mm -hmm. in those American movies or South African movies. Mm -hmm. But it's because those countries have certain structures and uh, support systems for their industries, okay. which are lacking here. Right. So, so it's a funding aspect from your, so. from your yes. uh, view. Any other views and <coughs> reasons why we're not having our films featuring in our own cinemas? Okay, maybe, maybe that question, really, we have discussed this question in a number of times mm. in different film uh, forums. Mm. And uh, what I noticed is, I usually give an example of maybe Sabuk Varazipi, and maybe I look back at maybe the Nigerian uh, cinema movement when it started way back in the, in the, in the 80s. Right. You understand? That is, that, that is where we are right now. You are to look at Sabuk Varazipi. He had an appeal to the local populace in Zimbabwe. People accepted him. I would want to argue that maybe Sabuk Varazipi was watched more than maybe all these other movies that you're mentioning that you're seeing in the cinema houses. But it was maybe they were being watched maybe on a different uh, medium, maybe through phones, mm -hmm. uh, social media, mm -hmm. and maybe through DVDs. They didn't actually get to go into cinema houses. Right. Uh, he cannot really com compete with the... Uh, Hollywood model of filmmaking because maybe technically he's not upright. Okay. But the narrative was what? Was what people identified with. So I think there's need for us maybe to actually uh, bridge that gap between the narrative and the technical aspect of things. Sure. So that maybe we come up with something that can actually harness all the energies from the audience 
and the actors and the film producers. So I guess this is the question then about this being a money-making industry. Do you think that local Zimbabweans will support? You said, you talked about uh, Sabo Kuvada Zib. People watched him. They're using their mobile phones. Naturally, you're going to have to have a certain amount of airtime or data in your phone to be able to watch this. So it means Marino Buddha. If people want to see it and people enjoy the product, they'll pay. So surely all you're talking about, about airing a movie here or even having a premiere, are we saying that the people of Zimbabwe, the consumers, won't be willing to part with more money than they do with their mobile phones? Well, I think, I think uh, basically when you're looking at uh, cinemas, the uh, thing is people don't go to the cinema specifically to just watch, want to watch a movie. It's about the culture of the movie house, the culture of the cinema. There yeah, are a lot of things that are, they, they experience the experience, exactly. Right. So I think maybe if they're also dealing with local uh, film and they want local films to be watched by people in, in their cinemas, they really have to invest in actually branding uh, that particular screening sessions for Africa for, for local films. And I think it would work well if they rebrand it, maybe make it different, a bit different from watching a Hollywood film, mm. maybe in one of the local movie houses. It's different from watching a local film also in that same movie house. Mr. Tongani. Yeah, I would agree with him in the sense that um, uh, there are people out there who want to cons consume our own products. Right. But now, um, the, the scenario is not conducive for them because they don't know, they don't know whether there is an, an African film or a Zimbabwean film that is happening, when and where. That's the problem. But I think um, given the opportunity, I think people, Zimbabwean people will consume our own products. All right. You're watching My Future right now, and we're discussing film in Zimbabwe. Uh, we'll be back with more of this after the break. But in the meantime, think about this. What was the last local production you watched on television, besides this one, of course? Welcome back to My Future. Tonight we're discussing film in Zimbabwe. We have a panel. We are in a movie house in Zimbabwe. Thought it would be best to come here and just feel the environment, feel the atmosphere. And uh, just before the break, we were talking about how it is that Zimbabwean films are not featured in our cinemas and some of the problems and the challenges that filmmakers are, are facing. Uh, so we have Charlene Magweni, Anthony Tongani, Nick Zemura, and Donald Mabido. And uh, they are panelists this evening as we break down the industry of film. Now, in discussing this, so uh, when we talk about film being a money-making industry, uh, we always must look at, as you said, what appeals to the consumers locally and then, I guess, one day regionally and nationally, internationally. But what are the main themes that have driven Zimbabwean film over the years? Um, maybe we can go as far back as maybe 1980 or before then. Um, I'll start with you there, uh, Mr. Tongani, because I think you've watched this journey longer than most of us have. There are many themes. If you look at uh, the most successful stories, the Neria, the Jeet, uh, everyone's child, it's about social life. If you look at Neria, it's about inheritance. There were uh, issues to do with inheritance. Mm -hmm. uh, people identify with those, I mean, with that, with that subject. So it was successful in Neria. And we have um, cultural aspects like in Jeet, People identify with that. But I'll tell you uh, issues that are African, people, uh, I would say Africans will identify with it. If you look at even Nigerian films, mm -hmm. Zimbabweans identify with Nigerian films because of the African aspect. Right. You see? So we had a number, we had issues to do with HIV and AIDS, political sometimes. But politics is a different ball game altogether. <laughs> Why do you say that? Uh, because there are many connotations when it comes to politics. Mm -hmm. If you try to comment some uh, a, a political commentary, then it can be more misconstrued to mean something else. But surely you're the ones who are supposed to. In fact, if anybody has leeway to talk about our political stories and talk about our political background, it's you in this industry because you, it's art. Yes, and you can I, say it's fiction, I, I do, you know, it doesn't I, have to be based on a true story, <laughs> there's ways around it, you know? I, I agree with you, but, yeah. well, 
<laughs> all right, I'll come, I, I, I'll come to the younger generation, all right, and ask about this because we know there's different mediums, right? Whatever you produce doesn't necessarily have to be aired where you might think there's polarization. There are limitless platforms you can use to still tell the Zimbabwean story. I think, uh, and I, I want to speak on personal, uh, from personal experience, when, when you are a writer, you can write as far as you want. I mean, you, you can imagine it and write it. And um, I think in Zimbabwe right now, we are so consumed by our day to day that we, we don't even want to spend our time going into fantasy. And maybe to reiterate what Tongan is saying is, um, there's so many themes that you can delve into without having to worry about who's listening and how they are listening to it. Um, and I think because we're such a small country population-wise, everybody knows everybody. I, I, you know, the six degrees of separation is too much for Zimbabwe. I think it's two or three. <laughs> and if you are going to say something that one person thinks is not what they agree with, there is uh, this notion that you are going into the wrong area. And I think as a people, we are very much into self-censorship. There are so many things that even when I'm talking in my studio with my uh, colleagues and say, we're going to do this, they say, but uh, won't we be in trouble? And I say, who have you seen in trouble because of this? But at the same time, you, you have a, we have a film that I did with Tongani, and he, pl he plays the, the lead character in there. Um, and we have a scene where somebody goes to see a, a minister, a fictional minister. And to be honest with you, it's been nine months. We can't find an, anybody in Zimbabwe who will give us an office to shoot that scene. I'm just <laughs> saying, when, when, when you say we want to do this, we, we've got a lot of offers to come to the office. Oh, show me the script. What do you want to do? And I say, oh, you know, ah, you know, you, you, can you come back tomorrow? And then tomorrow you call. Mm -hmm. Nobody answers the phone. Uh, Why but don't it's you a create your current. own office? When you want, I can't imagine that's I, actually I, a, I, a blockade. No, it's 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 not to that extent. Right. But when you want something authentic, Again, you're just making a point that sometimes uh, when you want to portray something, a certain message, there is red yes, tape. Yes. I'm curious to hear. You are the gentleman behind the scenes as well as in front, but um, in behind the camera, in front of the camera, Charlene, you're in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. If somebody came to you with a script that was said to be perhaps controversial, mm -hmm. um, maybe politically leaning. If you had to play the role of somebody who maybe is a public figure, that you don't come, would you, would you do it? To be honest, it's tricky. It's a very tricky situation because at the end of the day, it ends up coming out as if I'm the mouthpiece of that particular agenda. Um, there was a time I was a, pre a TV presenter and I tackled an issue that was quite touchy to certain top knobs and I started getting calls after that. Why are you talking about this issue? And I'm saying, no, it's the truth. This is what's happening. This is what's on the ground. It may not tickle you the right way, but it's actually what's happening. People are suffering because of what you're doing. And instead, you're getting threatening calls after that. And I'm just, I'm the presenter. I'm the person who's taking the information, Don't putting shoot it the out messenger. there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's a team, it's the actor, but it's also the writer, it's also the director. So at the end of the day, people see the production, they see the actor, they see the actress, and they think, you the whole message, mm. <laughs> there's yeah. nothing else. So it does become very tricky to play such a role. All right, uh, we're going to take a break and come back. Um, I don't know about you as a Zimbabwean, but all I want to see is more out of our film industry. And this program really is to help us all get an appreciation of why we're not seeing more of our film industry. And I guess this behind the scenes of behind the scenes are things that we never would have known just sitting at home and wondering why we switch on the television and there aren't any good quality productions or there aren't many productions out of Zimbabwe at all. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. This is my future. Welcome back to My Future. In our last segment, we're going to hopefully find some kind of conclusions around the film industry and find a way around some of the challenges that they've highlighted. Um, I want to start by proposing one and say that there's so many stories that have come out of our country um, that maybe have been produced as films or short films or theater films, but because, um, I guess, of the mediums that are used, not all of us are privy to them or exposed to them. So, for example, there was a situation where we had Cecil the Lion, right? Big hit for Zimbabwe. Um, even 
you know, in preparation of, of uh, you, know, ho uh, you know, sporting events that we host, why is it that we don't see enough coming out of the film industry around those types of stories that are less sensitive or controversial than the ones that you have uh, previously alluded to? Where are the filmmakers in these instances? Uh, the filmmakers are there, mm. uh, but I think uh, the other leading factor is funding, the money to do it. With the amount of interest that was around Cecil the Lion, I'm sure many of us learned about Cecil when we saw him on CNN, okay? Cecil the Lion would definitely, I'm using this as an example because it's very recent and it would have got so much funding. When it comes to animals and wildlife and that kind of story, you're telling me we wouldn't have found funding for that? I, I, I would love you to be my producer <laughs> if, if you think <laughs> funding is easy to come no, by. No, I'm not saying they, it's they, easy, they, don't get me wrong. They, they, there yeah. is interest, okay? There are, lot, there are a lot of things that, 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 that happen in Zimbabwe. I think I have about 24 scripts that are ready to be shot tomorrow mm. if, you, if you have the funding, as you say. <laughs> but <laughs> what happens is when it comes to the uh, reality on the ground, I think the only people that have stood up for theater or film and stuff like that is the Culture Fund, uh, which is a, a non-profit organization. And they've been, I think, th their attempt is the best so far. Uh, Short of the NGOs that come here and they ask us to do AIDS films and then go back outside and make it look like everybody in Zimbabwe is HIV positive and we need more help. Mm. I do not see anybody funding you if you say you want to write a love story like say the Titanic or maybe you want to tell the story of Mbiane Handa. Mm. Um, who do you go to and why do they want to put money? People put money in things that will give them either a leverage to go back and look for more money somewhere else. So if you think of AIDS films, why are there so many AIDS films in Zimbabwe? It's because if you do an AIDS film, there are 27 organizations that are waiting for you in the avenues that will take your films to the Scandinavia and they make everybody look like okay. that's what we do. All right. I, I, okay, you want to add something there, uh, I, I think I mean, we have talked about this issue of funding over and over again. I mean, ever since I started uh, film at the Zimbabwe Film School, it was still the topic, uh, we don't have funding, we don't have what. That, but maybe I always go back to, to, to the Nigerian modern filmmaking. They started without any money. It was market theater which was transformed into what? Into a cinematic timeline. Then people started identifying with the story and mm -hmm. they and developed they a market out of that. Right. Yeah, you understand. Right. But I think the best thing that we actually should be talking about is government's attitude towards the film industry. Because you, you, you find we can talk about funding and everything and everything, but what is government's attitude towards this particular industry? We look at the issue of piracy. You understand? Uh, piracy, we cannot say when it started before this uh, social and Guinea uh, age that we're now living in, uh, you'd find that piracy was not so hard to control if government wanted to control it. Because you're talking about government that actually removed uh, illegal partners from Chiazwa and stopping pirating of discs, people selling discs on street corners. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't stop it for a particular reason. So I think we should explore why government now is he has a negative attitude towards developing film in Zimbabwe, because that is what the communication is actually coming out. It, it has a negative attitude towards promoting film in Zimbabwe. I want to say, and not that I'm any voice of government or anything, but I'm going to play the devil's advocate and say, I also find that the film industry doesn't do enough to promote themselves. Because it's one thing saying government is not putting enough in there, they're not considering you in their budget, they're not promoting you. But are you promoting yourselves? I work in a media house. Not once have I had anyone in film come to me and say, Ruveneko, Tudabudopa program, Pako, Tutaro, Nejra, Tirkwita. Not once, you know, until the other day. Yeah, I saw Nick the other day, but I'm talking about the four <laughs> years that I've been working in Zimbabwe. You guys don't promote yourselves. You look at, you need to build relations with people that make noise about you. You need to look at some of our local publications, one of our daily newspapers. Mm -hmm. There's a little corner, top right corner, mm -hmm that has probably one artist at least four times a week in that publication. Whether okay. he has traveled to where, whether he's performing at some little bar in Mashingo, he will be in that corner at least four times a week. I know what are you that. doing to promote yourself? I will respond to that. And maybe that indicts you when it comes to the f fact that you said, um, what are, what, uh, what's the government's role? If you look at what we do, and then the platforms that are there, you talked of the newspapers. Okay, the newspapers in this country it, it are almost owned by somebody. 
Okay, they may be public newspapers, but they are owned by somebody. The editor answers to somebody. And you go in there, you make your film. God forbid you make a film that people think, oh, this, you're not supposed to say this. And you think you're going to take it to the Herald and they're going to put it in their paper? You're going to go to ZFM or to Mighty Movies and say, I want to put this on? There's somebody who says, no, that should stop. I'm not saying that has happened. That's what I'm saying. But, have but you then tried if you are known, fail? if you are going to because be known. it's easy to say, Kuti, it's not going to work, but have you tried? I was saying that there, number one, are many topics that you have all covered regarding your work. Mm. Not all of your screenplays or features or short films or documentaries are politically controversial. Surely. Yes. So, number one, there's other content that you can push. If you find that we live in a polarized environment, why not push the stuff that is safe, so to speak, as a start? Build the relationships. Prove yourselves. Mm -hmm. And why are you not banging on the doors of media houses? Because we are the ones that make the most noise. Here's Ray Muripanunas. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing also is that, um, as sad as it is to say, media houses don't tend to promote local artists. So, for example, I remember last year there was um, an article, a review of, this was around December, mm. a review of all the films that are being done in Zimbabwe. And this journalist had the goal to say there is no local production that has been done in 2015. And I'm thinking, okay, have you watched ZBC? Have you watched the programs that are being taken even to Zambia's Magic? Just to name a few, not even to talk about the ones that are on other social pl media platforms. This journalist actually went out to write a full feature article to say there's nothing to review. For and as an, yes, for yeah. 2015, and as an actress who starred in two series for 2015 on ZBC alone. I'm thinking, what about the others that have starred in sure. so many others? others? Okay, I think it's fair that on the side of the journalists or the reporters, there does need to be more research. Yes. Um, but I'll still come back and say, be in people's faces more. Mm. I, I, I've been coming and doing films here uh, at home, mm. maybe in the last four years. But it doesn't mean that I started film four years ago. Mm. I was a filmmaker when I was in high school. Right. Okay. I had ideas. Some of the films, uh, Tongani knows this, some of the scripts that I have were written in the 80s when I was in primary school. And I spent a day, I, I, have, I, I could find the records what day it was, at ZBC, waiting to ask for the person who is responsible for taking local content, local filmmakers that are young, Okay, I have to come, when I come here and I go to, to, to ZBC to make an appointment and see people, I think there's a lot more to do with the fact that I make my appointment whilst I'm in Washington, D.C., and I get through, and, I, and I'm not saying, because I, you can't tell me there are not enough kids in Mbari, Mfakose, Highfields, Borodeo, Murewa, who want to go to ZBC and say we've done this. Mm. I used to watch great theater in Murewa, and where are those actors? Did they just lose interest? The doors are not as open as you think. Now it's because I come, I work with Peggy and I come to, to your offices and I meet you on the walkway and I say, hi, I'm a filmmaker, I want to be on your show. But how many people can walk up to your offices and, say, and do the same? If I, I were to ask, if there are kids who want to come and talk about what they are doing today on your show, how do they approach you? Mm. Right? So these things are not as open as you think they are. Sure. And uh, yes, the government might be faulted at some uh, extent but we are just not an open society that is uh, open to people coming in mm. why is it that we have kids doing dance or music but we never had these kids doing something else until the dance or uh, thing came on mm. it's because now you can go to bar at your uncle's house and there's a record and you can do dance or music <laughs> right you, yes. you don't think they're piano greats who want to play piano and they want the one hundred thousand dollar piano but nobody's buying it for them Unfortunately, we're going to have to end on that note. And uh, we are doing a series of uh, these programs where we're discussing media in Zimbabwe. And this is only but a fraction of understanding the film industry in Zimbabwe. Unfortunately, we do have to end our program here. But I want to thank you all so much. You've left us all with a lot to think about um, and the role that we play as consumers of film and how we can support the industry. And hopefully, like you said, those doors that you knock on that aren't getting opened, um, hopefully they also have had something to think about to make your lives easier. <laughs> but thank you very much to Charlene Magweni, uh, Anthony Tongani, Nick Zemura, and Donald Mabido. Thank you so much. All right, that's it from me tonight on My Future. We'll be back with more next week, same time, same place. Good night. For now, be good. And if you can't be good, be safe.